Good morning, Rabbi Boys. This is this past year, Russell is so live from at Solo in Flatbush, Brooklyn, New York, Kodesh, New York. Wow, what a schos. First of all, as you might know, it was a practically Mesechus Megillah, Tainus area, where David Zlatnik and Shalom Ran and Akiva Salkowitz, the Chevra, they made a whole matzah and they got 350 Hatzala members to join the WhatsApp group and to start the daf. And the oil was buzzing and everything was going. Turns out that Hatzala is not a big fan of Mesechus Yivamas. Once Yivamas hit, it was like, now we're down to Sean Rand, David Zlotnik. Not so much Akiva Sokowitz. It depends on the Masechta, it depends on. No! <laughs> wow, perfect timing, perfect timing. It's a schuss, it's a real schuss to be here with people who saved so many lives. And I gotta tell you, I'm also in a way in the Atzala business. It's a little bit of a different business, but I was just saying it uh, maybe two, three days ago in this year. You guys save lives, and MDY saves nefashas. We save people through Tyra. When you learn Tyra every day, you become consistent, and you learn Tyra, yeah, you can take the whole thing. It changes your life. And you could ask every single person that ever joined the shear. This is not a regular shear. This is a shear that the Torah changes lives. Hatzolus nefashas mamish. It's possible to be hatzolus guy and save physical lives and save nefashas also. It's not a contradiction. Do both. So it's a, a real honor for me to be here in Hatzolus. Yishkoyach to the organizers. Yishkoyach to all the people. The food was excellent. The matzah is great. And um, as you might know, I came from Eretz Yisrael straight, running off the plane, right away to Baltimore, to, to Brooklyn, to Chicago. This morning, got up early, gave four shiurim yesterday, got up early this morning, caught a flight, and immediately I already gave a shir today here in this building in Hebrew, and here we are. So if the other was a little concerned. They said, you've been slurring your words. And the Hatzala guys are ready to go with oxygen. And also, it's just the guy hasn't slept in a few days. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. We're, it happens to be that today's a very special day. Today, we're finishing Herak Elimitzius, the most famous, one of the, every kid starts with Elimitzius, and started Herak HaMafkin. So, we're straddling two of the most famous Prokham and Shas. We're going to start Paragam Afkin today, Be'ez HaShem. So, usually we start with emails, and I have to tell you, this is one of the only times in my life that I prepared an entire shear on a plane. I don't do well on planes to begin with, with the oxygen and the noise and this, but that's what it was. It was a little bit in the taxi, a little bit on the plane. It is what it is. Daf Yoimi keeps on moving. It doesn't wait for anybody. And today is another day. Today is another shir. And we got to go. Besides, I was told that there's some sort of function in like 45 minutes. We got to really keep it going. Our boys said we're holding a beautiful sugya on Daf Lam Gimel Amad Aleph. Literally, the last two words on Lam Bez, Lam Gimel Amad Aleph. And the question of the Gemara today is Is Tsar Balechayim? That's the Shaila. Mistreating an animal. So what kind of animal are we talking about? Not every single, not every single animal. We're talking about specific animals that help human beings like donkeys, cows, and even cats and dogs, says the Rajpa. Actually, not the Rashbot, the other Ephraim in the, in the Shukhan Aruch. Because in general, there's not a Isser to, he says at least, to kill animals is not a problem. 
to be mitzar animals might not be a problem. The Rizal says it's an issue. We don't want to be, I mean, it's chasidus, don't be mitzar in them. Okay. Yesterday we discussed, you might not have heard, what about What about, the Shaila is, what about being the Tsar, your fellow Jew? Are you being over on Tsar al You hear the question? You go to your friend, you pull his ear. If you pull an, a cat's ear, you're over on Tsar al What if you do it to a human being? Tsar al So the Mechlag is your shayim, actually. If there's Tsar al on a human being, there's certainly other Yisur. Pen Yosef. There's also you know, Dvarims, things like that. But in terms of Tzar Balachai. Okay, so here we are. Toshma. Roy Veit Veloi Ravtzon. Here you have a picture of an animal that's Roy Veitz. It's weighed down by the load. The Tzar is to pick him up, to unload him, load him back up. You're doing this for the owner. But not for an animal that just keeps on doing this over and over again. So this is the, the halach of Priko. Kisiri Chamers and Acha. Yesterday, one of the most amazing Gemaras we had was all the way at the end of the Amad, which talks about the Chiyov. We have a Chiyov to help our enemy before we help the people we love. That's our Torah. Our Torah tells us that we must help our enemies, the people we dislike. Why do we dislike them? Because we feel like dislike. Not because we're mechuyiv to. Because the person that you're mechuyiv to dislike, okay. At certain times, a person is over a certain surim, we dislike them. But there's a person, we just don't like the way he looks. We don't like his minhagim. We don't like, he, he's, he's litvish and I'm chasidish. He's, he's a spardi, I'm Ashkenazi. Whatever the reason is, you don't like him. You mechuyiv to help his donkey before you help your best friend's donkey. That's the chiyuv. Kisir chamor san acho, your enemy. Roivet, tachas matzoi, but not a donkey that constantly does this. He's a habitual roivet donkey. Here, this is a roivet v'loi raftzom. When it gets to it. Oh, here we go. Stam! A lazy donkey. You don't have to help him out. Roivet, another thing we learn from this, Veloi Oime, and not a donkey that's standing. It has to be laying down. Now, we don't necessarily pass him like this, but this is what this man Damar holds. Tachas Mesoi, and he's under the load of the weight of the load. Veloi Mefoyrok, and not a donkey that's already unloaded. Now, Reuvet Veloy Rafton, the first word over here, the originator says that the extra nun adds, met, takes a word, Reuvet, one time, Rafton means many. He says, like, Chodesh Nisan is the Chodesh of a Ness. Yeah, the nun is Chodesh of many, many Nisan gluyan that we, Klai Yisrael had, and Bezer Hashem, we could chop around Nisan in this month. Like we say, Katosh Sol Chod, you constantly, over and over, you forgive us. Tachas masoi, masli shiyoch la'amu This is a weight that is typical for an animal. Here's a funny picture of, of a donkey. Shvach a weight. Maybe for a small donkey, that's a lot. But each donkey and, and the weight that it could carry. V'yam r'sar v'lechaim d'ray. So I want to prove to you something. If the idea is that you're not allowed to watch an animal be bizarre. And when you see an animal bizarre, you have to go help him out. Mali Roivitz, or Mali Rafton. It's unbelievable. I'm thinking out stuff, thinking aloud here with you. This whole paragalo Matthias is about helping another Jew. When you see a Jew in pain, when you see a Jew losing money, you see that he left his air conditioner on, you see that he left his light on the car. And who more? I'm thinking out stuff. I'm sitting in a room with people that their whole life. Is about helping another yid. Two, three in the morning to jump out of bed. It's all about helping another. That's what this paragraph is about. Famous. Helping another yid. You see that he's suffering with his donkey. It's not going well. You help him out. 
Who cares if the donkey keeps on doing it, if he's habitual or not? At the end of the day, you have to help a donkey out. No, and a kavachomer. If you're helping a donkey, kavachomer ben benoisha kavachomer, or helping another yid. Yeah, the famous meister, the guy, the guy says, "Oh, I learned you know, see this. It says that you have to help a donkey." So certainly, you know, the yid, so he sees a woman in there as well. You know, people don't have cars. It's, it's very hard to watch. My neighbor, you have people that they schlep the groceries. Literally, women schlep fifty pounds of groceries for ten minutes straight. It's nerve to watch. So the guy sees this woman, he sees her schlepping, so he runs, he's like behind, he runs, he runs. And he gets to her, he, he realizes it's his wife. He says, I just came to say, I'm going to coil, have a great day. Mali Roivitz, Mali Rafton, Mali Oyman. Who cares if it's standing, it's not standing. At the end of the day, if the animal's suffering, you help it out. Says Gabor Romani, Rabbi Yosek Lili, the Omar Tsar Belechaim, the Rabbono. Rabbi Yosek Lili says, that is Tzar Belechaim, and Tzar Belechaim is only the Rabbanon. Right? So we have Machlaikis. Is Tzar Belechaim the rest of the Rabbanon? We can't really prove it. You're not going to prove it from here because, yes, you're right, it seems like it's not a big deal. But that's because it goes like Rebbe Zagli, who says it's not a big deal, it's only the Rabbanon. It talks about a load that, you could, that, that the animal could take and not take. Man translate this Lehi Sefar. Who's the one that makes the distinction whether or not it's a very heavy, you shouldn't have loaded up. It's the owner's fault. Who told him to load up so much? That's only Rabbi Yisai Glili in the Mishnah, Shema Mino, that it all goes like Rabbi Yisai Glili. Ask the Gemara, interesting question. We must look at Rabbi Yisai Glili. It doesn't make sense to say that it goes according to Rabbi Yisai Glili. Why? It talks about in the Sefer that you're supposed to unload the animal, and not if it's already unloaded. My loy mefarik. What does that mean? Ilay loy mefarik. Cloud that you don't have to help somebody load up a car, load up a donkey. Hoksiv, hokim tokim imoy. So now we already saw the pasuk here. There's two pasukim. One is prika, one is tina. Prika means to unload the animal. Tina means to load up the animal. So here in the pasuk of tina, all the way in the bottom it says hokim tokim. You have a mitzvah to help somebody load. Today, we don't have donkeys, so you help him load his car to go to the mountains. There's a mitzvah. So you can't say that uh, there's a mandala that says you don't have to help at all. It's a mafurish apostle, you have to help. Oh, to load, you might be able to get paid for it. If you, you have to help him, but you can demand payment. But who's the mandala that says you can get paid? Man translated this to the highest part. Rabbana. It's only Rabbanon who makes the distinction between getting paid and not getting paid. Not Rabbi Yisaglili. How are you telling me it's Rabbi Yisaglili when it's Rabbanon who says this far? Says the Gemara Loyal Rabbi Yisaglili, you dina sovel like Rabbanon. Who said? There is a machlokes between Rabbi Yisaglili and Rabbanon, Tzavel Chaim, the rice, and not in the narrow mission. We have another machlokes. But maybe Rabbi Yisaglili is in agreement with Rabbanon that when it comes to loading up an animal, you do get paid. Like Rabbanon said, who told you that he argues on everything? Maybe only argues on one thing. Tana Rabbanon. New sugi, a boy said, brand new sugi. When the, the Torah says, here, Kisira Chamur Sanacha, you see your, your friend's donkey. How far away are you? Where, where are you? Where's this donkey compared to where you are? You're on a bridge, you're on the 110th floor, you're looking down and you see him walking in Manhattan. Like, where are you exactly? This is this year? Kisira Yachal Afilu Merachik. I think you're very far away. Binoculars, you saw it. Tamaloyim Kisivga. You bumped into him. Ihachi iki sivga. If it's that you bumped in, yachab gia mamish. Maybe you have to touch him. Tavlo kisira. No, you saw him. So, so which one is it? You see or you bumped into him? Basically, you reach. It's a little bit of both. Basically, you reach. Yesh bab gia. Shira chachamim echad mishav al mechza b'mil. One seventh point five of a mil. V'zeu ris. It's approximately five hundred feet. Let's say. 500 feet. So you're standing a distance of 500 feet away from somebody, you see him struggling, you go and you help him. So this is the Yisoy that we said yesterday also. Once you get involved, that's it, you're stuck. You get involved, now you have to walk for a parasite. How much is a parasite? 30 times the risk. So... You see him from 500 feet away. Now you and then you come close and you help him out. You have to make sure that the animal is able to walk without falling for a full parasol. A parasol has four mil, and each mil has seven and a half 
risks. So it's 30 times the amount. The same thing with Akadosh Baruch Hu. said this yesterday, but maybe there's some people that didn't hear the shir yesterday, maybe. Once you start something, then Akadosh Baruch Hu goes ahead and he, he's with you. But you have to start it. You can't think about it. You can't say, oh, I want to do shots. You have to do it. You have to sit down and start learning. Once you start, then Akadosh Baruch Hu takes you to Parsa. He goes. He continues with you. Ta'ano, medad yinu ha Parsa. Rim Nassim Tzvi Finkel, Zechroinu, Zechel Tzal, I learned in the mirror when he was there. He used to say a lot, he used to say to Chavetz Chaim, that a Rebbe, once he takes a Talmud under his wings, he has to be with him for a parsa. In other words, even after he gets married, he has to, he has to be at his side. That's his job. And he gets paid for this. His machloik is now in the Shukhan Aruch, is Tzar Baal Chaim Deraisa, the Rabbanon, Okay, but we're mocked on it, and we, we don't, we're not desire animals, especially animals that are domesticated and help human beings. Says the Mishnah, sponsored by Moshe Cohen, Schos should have Hatzloch and Parnosa and Hatzloch and Ruchnius. Very interesting Mishnah. This Mishnah, I know somebody that came about Shuvah, he didn't like it so much in the beginning. We all know that you're supposed to give cover to your father, to your mother. But what happens when you have a Rebbe? How, how do we view a Rebbe in Allah? So the Mishnah starts off saying, go step by step. If you and your father, a son and a father, lose something, and you can only retrieve one of the objects, who do you treat first? You or your father? You come first. One about Abidas Rabbi. Your Rebbe dropped a watch in the ocean. You also, you, you could go in and just grab one who you get. Shall I call them? You come before your Rebbe. Maitha was Rebarf Bear. He was a Talmud Muvog of Reb Chaim. And Reb Chaim was in a big, big Bal Yisurim. He had a lot of Yisurim. And Rebarf Bear said, it's a memory, he said, I wish I could take some of the Rebbe's Yisurim. So Reb Chaim Briskin said, ah, I see it. You, you don't know simple Gemara. So Baruch Bar said, he maybe, maybe Rebbe meant this Mishnah. That when a, a person has an Aveda together with his Rebbe, you have to, you have to worry about yourself first. First take care of yourself, then you take care of your Rebbe. So Chaim was saying to him, first, your health comes first. Then your Rebbe, don't, don't volunteer your body like that to your Rebbe. Sorry, Aveda Sobiv Avedis Rabbi. Now we're jumping. He's not in the picture anymore. You have his father, and you have a Rebbe. Shorabi Koidemes. Which one should he take care of first? A father or a Rebbe? Shorabi Kidemes. A Rebbe goes before a father. Shaavi Vivi Aloy Lamazah, father brings him to this world. Rabbi Shalimdoi Chachma, Vivi Oil Chaye, Ba Oilam Habo. In Galicia, they would start. Teaching the kids Elam from this Mishnah, not from the beginning of Elam Why? To teach them the Chashivas HaToyra, that a Rebbe comes before a father. You should know as a child, Rebbe comes before a father. He wasn't going to say what kind of Rebbe, not the Rebbe that teaches him Aleph Beis, as much as a Rebbe that teaches him Halacha or Rav Chachma. We'll see. V'ima Viv Chacham. If the father is a chacham, he's a tamad chacham, shalom, we could damage. Now, it happens to be in the Adil Yo, and also the Sefer Hasidim say, we all say the same thing that if a father pays for the Rebbe, so maybe in our generation we pay tuition, not stam, like what is it? It's already 20 grand or something, no? Some of them sugar. Then the father comes first because the Rebbe is only there because of the father. That's what they say. Some of these are tough, Rabbi. So some of these are tough to, 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 to hear. Your father and your Rebbe are carrying something heavy. He helps his Rebbe first unload and then load up. This is the hardest one. You see your father in captivity. Imagine your father, if somebody's father is in Gaza. And he can only say either his father or his Rebbe from the tunnels. 
You say if you're ready first, as a state. Maybe that's what the guy didn't like so much. Why? Because his Rebbe brings him to Elam Abbaugh and his father brings him to Elam Azet. There's a guy in his stroll waiting for a doctor. And the doctor walks in, so he stands up. The doctor says, What are you standing up? I never saw that before. He says, No, no, no. He says, It says, My father brought me into Elam Azet. I heard about you already. I heard your reputation. You bring a lot of people to Elam Abbaugh. <laughs> Oh. Once again, if the father is also that rabbi, then he's put his father first, because father has both. And he's his father. So we dash in this pasuk that you have a chiyuv, a person has a chiyuv not to be poor. What does that mean? If a person could work, he has a job, he has a paying job, and he decides, eh, I want to rely on the, the, the kupashal staka, I want to I wanna feel what it's like to be poor. It's also. Obviously, if a person is unemployed and he can't find a job, obviously we're not talking about it. Talking about a person could avoid it and he doesn't avoid it, he has a problem. He's over on this passage of Ephes. In other words, the Gemara understands that you shall call, kaidu shall call, shall call. The person must take care of himself before he takes care of other people. I'm sure everybody in this room heard that from their wives or whatever. Why are you running and taking care of these atzal calls? Your family comes first. No? Only you? Only you? I see everybody's shaking. Okay, good. You, you guys caught what I'm talking about. Anyways, when you're so involved in chesed, sometimes you forget, Pasha, take care of yourself and your. Your, your health goes, your this, it's, it's a dangerous thing. So the Mara says, first you take care of yourself. What, if you have koiches and everything else, then you can take care of other people. So Rashi says like this. Maybe it's because I didn't see Rashi inside. Rashi called Mekayim Ba'atz Mekach. Says Rashi, The Torah is not Mekayim to give to talk about. In this situation, why? Because you have excuses, you're concerned that maybe you're not going to have it, maybe this. Nevertheless, a person should give the tzedakah, go beyond the letter of the law, even though he could say, listen, I need to take care of myself first. I learned in Gemara, you have to take care of yourself first. So I'm not sure I have enough money. What if tomorrow I have a, bad, a rainy day? And da, 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 da. I, need, I can't give you tzedakah now. No. Because if you act like that, yes, halakhically you're right. But then Hashem is going to act like that also. Unless it's a mefurish to have If a person is always super uh, concerned and, and he has anxiety about giving money because what if uh, you know I need money tomorrow? He gets rid of gemilos chasadim and zaka. The saif, the terrible curse will happen. He himself is going to be poor. So Rashi says basically, you shouldn't have anxiety for these kind of things. Like Mr. Sharm says, Mr. Sharm says that you're not allowed to have anxiety. Okay, it's easy to say, hard to people that, that suffer from anxiety, they'll, they'll say, listen, I try. But he says, what are you going to be worried about? I know people, I might be married to one, I'm not going to say, but in the water, there might be a shark, sometimes even in the bathtub, there might be a shark. What, what are you worried about? What? When was the last time somebody got killed by a shark? One a year, two a year, you have to know statistics. So the Mishnah Shem says, you have to know statistics. How many people get killed by sharks every year? Two, you're not dying from a shark. Impossible. How many people die flying on a Boeing 737? Zero in the last 15 years in America. Zero. So why, you, why every time you fly, you're shaking like a leaf and you have to take, pop the pills? Because you're not, you're not working with statistics. You're, you're letting anxiety take over. There's a, a mice I just heard yesterday. There's a guy, I don't even know, when was the last large plane crash in America? After September 11th. That was 20 years ago. What? Rockaway. Rockaway. How long ago was that? October 11th. Yeah, so that's 20 years ago. Yeah. 20, you know how many millions and millions of flights 
it's so much more dangerous to, to you have probably more of a chance of getting hit by that hotel garage door than uh, you know that goes up in 1.2 seconds you know it's so there's a guy his job was to operate the D9 you guys are familiar with the D9 right those giant bulldozers knock over the, the buildings in Gaza D9s he's in Lebanon and he's operating a D9 and unfortunately an Israeli tank saw him and they were convinced it's a Lebanese D9 and they shot him. Kids, so he got out the, the nest, but he had tremendous uh, trauma and everything. Now in this war, they called him up. They said, listen, you're a professional D9er. We need you. Let's go. So he gets in the D9. He's in there for about two minutes. And he had a, what is it called? You know, the panic attack. PTSD. PTSD, exactly. Has an attack. They grab him, they yank him out, they say, you're going home right now, you're never coming back. So they put him in, in, a, in a jeep and they start going. So he calls up his wife, says, I'm coming home, I had a panic attack. His wife says, you're not coming home until you kill, kill 10 terrorists at least. I'm not, you don't even think about it. She starts yelling at him. Kids are the pachat of his wife. It's, he told his commander, he says, listen, I don't know what to do. It's either PTSD or my wife. I, I PTSD, I'll, I'll take that any day. So they send him back in there. So... Lamaisa, you can overcome. There's, a, there's easy ways to overcome a shtickle uh, trauma. It's not a bit... Yeah. So, says the Gemara. So, that's what Rashi says. It's not, stop being concerned that you're not going to have money tomorrow. Just give it to up. Yeah, you're right. You, you have all the right to be concerned. And if you're concerned, you're, you're makayim da'al offer. But at the end of the day, you should know that you are not going with Nimi Shur Sadin. And then, because Baruch Chas Rishon could deal with you, not with Nimi Shur Sadin. You want Hashem to also overlook things and not go by the letter of the law. Because if, if he goes by the letter of the law, it's all over for us. Says Gemara, Hoya Ava Virabi, yeah, brand new sugya, two dots. Hoya Ava Virabi, noisy masu. Both his father and his Rebbe are carrying something, you should help your Rebbe out first. Tonor Abba, Rabbi Shomru, what does it mean, Rebbe? Rabbi Shalim the Chachma. This is a Rebbe that taught him Chachma. Rabbi said, what's Chachma? What does Chachma mean? Torah, there's a lot of Torah. What kind of Torah? Gemara. Gemara. So all you guys are thinking to yourselves, and I'll, I'll be straight up with you. I saw Mephurish in Gai Vidalio, that anybody that ever went to my shear, it's all over. I'm before your fathers. That's it. You didn't go to my shear. That's why. We don't want you anyways. I see already what kind of guy you are. <laughs> But not the Rebbe that told him Chumash and Mishnayis. Gemara. What's Gemara? It explains Rashi. Gemara explains the contradictions between the Mishnayis. It explains where the Mishnah comes from. Divirim. Yudoyim and called Shiroiv Chachmasai. Oh, you guys go like Rebbe Yehuda. Shiroiv Chachmasai. Emenu. Ah, I got to tell you, because we just said, Loi B'chay Evyon. I got to tell you this, Chazanish. It's a Kamat, my sister Kamat Toya probably. But it's, it's good. It might have some truth to it. The Chazanish tells somebody, listen, I need you to go collect money for one of your relatives. He's an Evian. He says, are you kidding me? I'm not going to collect money for him. Every year on Purim, I'm Yoyit says a mitzvah, Matanas Lavyanim, Behidr Shabi Hidurim, Lukola Deis Lukola Humrus. If I start giving him money, he's not going to be Evian anymore. What am I going to do next Purim? My sister Kamat Toya. Says Gemara. Rabbi Yisrael Mafid Lo Yihirei Novel Ben Mishnah Achas Zeh Rabbi. If he explains to you one Mishnah, that's your Rabbi. Now listen to this. This is gonna blow you. All my Rabbi keep going. Rav Schoyro the Asbron Zua Malistroy. Okay. This is a halacha that says that if you have a, a vessel, a kli that has two purposes, one side is a spoon and one side is a fork. And one side broke off. It still is considered a kli and it's makabal tumah. So the halacha is very understood. It's very simple. But what is it? What's this listerin? I don't know what it is. He explained to him what it is. And from explaining to him what it is, he became his rebbe. So here's a, the idea of a lot what we do. It's a lot of pictures, yeah? There's a lot of uh, visuals. 
And here's, here's what it looks like. Let me see if I can find it here. Check this out. This is a Listerine. And when the Rebbe shows the Talmud, here's a picture, this is what it is. It's above and beyond what the, the halach is. The halach says, okay, it's half. This, here it is, here's a Listerine. Oh, you become the guy's Rebbe. Just by showing him, depicting it to him, that makes it a Rebbe. You rip Kriya for a parent, for, for one of the Shiva Kroivim, he ripped Kriya on a, on a, on a of a person. The Asbury, who explained to him, this thing right over here. It works like this. I don't know if I could do this. Let me see if I have a laser here. No. Okay. No? Do you see this uh, mouse? Or this yeah, yeah. yeah, you do? Okay, so this is the, the Heichel's door. The Heichel, this is where the menorah is. The, this is where they put the Ketairas. This is, um, what else do we have here? The Shulchan is right. And the entrance to the Kodesh HaKadosh, which is right over here. So, every morning they would open up the door. But not this door right over here. What they would do is, they would, a guy would come through this little hole here in the wall. He would stick his hand in up to his armpit. And with a key, he would open up the next door. And then he would get in from the small door. You could see right over here, I think it's like this right over here. You see this line right over here? This is how it would get into the hechel. Yeah? Okay, it is kind of large over here. Devout. So the, all he's saying is that one of the doors he opened up by extending his arm all the way till he can't reach, and then he opened up the door. The other one was immediate. He was able to go like this. He had to keep, boop. It was like very easy to open up from the inside. It was opening up the door from the inside of the Echel already. So this Talmud Chacham taught Shmuel this idea, and he became his rabbi to the point. He ripped the Kriya. He can't, he can't fix the clothing anymore. It's not like today. You know, you buy a suit and a place it costs 50 bucks and you're done. You did a Kriya. You, you go to the class real quickly. You hear that a parent, uh, you go, you take your worst suit and that's when you do Kriya. Talking about a, a, a beggar that costs $10,000 in those days, however much it costs, it's a crazy amount of money because they had to do it by hand. Kriya, that's it. It's done. He did this Rav, why? Because he taught him, Echad Yerid Lamas Hashechi, one key goes all the way to the armpit, Echad Poiseach Kevan, and the other key you open up immediately. Omar Ula. Tamid Chacham should be bavel umdim zem pneisa. A Tamid Chacham that Tamid Chacham stands up as if the other Tamid Chacham is his Rebbe Muva. The Koyrin Zazen and they tear Kriya one for the other. As if you're dealing with another Rebbe Muva. We could be on the same level, but you give me Kavit, I give you Kavit, I do Kriya, you you do Kriya. Ulein Avedim Lokem Aviv. And when it comes to a lost object, so if you're dealing with a friend who's a Tamil Chacham, but you so yes, he goes before your father. But in a Chazim Ela Rabbi Muvok, you it has to be this this friend is not a is not a real Rebbe Muvok. So only a Rebbe Muvok will go before your father. So I'm a friend. Your father goes before him. Ah, you just treated him like a Rebbe Muvok. You just stood up for him. You did Kriya for him. Well, he's dead now. But on your other friends, you do Kriya for if, they're, if they die. If they, now that they're alive, you stand up for them. When it comes between a friend and a father, father comes first, unless it's your Rebbe Muvok. This is a very, very sad story. And there's a lot of lessons to be learned from the story. Rav Chizda asks Ravuna. Ravuna was his rabbi. Talmud with Tzoruch Le Rabbi Mai. Five words. What happens if you have a Talmud in front of a rabbi, but the Talmud is, 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 he has knowledge that the rabbi doesn't have knowledge of. He knows different things that the rabbi doesn't know about. What's the Allah? How do we treat this? Is he, is he like, do you do Kriya for him? Do you stand up for him? Rav Huna didn't like it. Rav Huna thought that Rav Chiz is hinting to him. What about me? I'm your Talmud, but I know stuff you don't know, Rebbe. 
Maybe you should stand up for me. Maybe this. He says to him, I don't need you. There's a shayla where to put the period. Maybe it's It's my chalik to show him really. Or they were they were mad at each other for forty years. Or you can read it like like the art scroll has the nakudos, like my gemara has the nakudos. You need me until you're 40 years old. In other words, once you're 40, okay, then you have enough chachma, whatever. So they weren't mad at each other so many years. This might have happened when in the thir- when the was in the 30s. Okay, so a few years. Or the other traveling Mars, they were really mad at each other for 40 full years. They didn't, they didn't come see each other. Rav Chizda fasted 40 days because he was, he was sad that he made Rav Huna feel bad. He misspoke. He didn't mean to insult him. He asked him a question. Rav Huna took it the wrong way. Nevertheless, you have to fast. Rav Huna also, the Rebbe also fasted 40 days. Because he suspected Rav Chizda of being chutzpedic to him. But it wasn't true. He wasn't trying to be chutzpah. Says Rabbi Yochanan, halachik Rabbi Yehuda, that you need to learn most of your chachma from somebody in order for him to be considered your Rebbe. Mark, how's the lift going there? The lift? Ah, yeah. What, what? Which ones? Oh. Ah, I see, I see what you did. Okay. Shkai. Ravachabar Avun Omer Rav Sheish Talok Yerb Yoisi that if you just learn one halacha from somebody that is enough to be considered a Rebbe. As the Gemara Omi Omer Rabbi Yochanan Alachi Omer Rabbi Yochanan Alach Pistam Mishnah How could you say that Rabbi Yochanan is the one that said that Allah is like Rabbi Yochanan you need Rav Chachma you see from Rabbi Yochanan all you need is one halacha why? Because it says Usnan, Rabbi Yehuda says we go by the anonymous Mishnah. What does it say in the anonymous Mishnah? Usnan, Rabbi Shalim de Chachma. You, a Rebbe who brings you to Olam Abba is the Rebbe who teaches you one Alacha, Chachma, one Alacha. Like I keep on repeating this because I was very, very moved that I received a three-page letter from Benny Radnik. So he finishes off the letter, he just, just now, for the plane. Finishes off the letter. I showed it to somebody. I let somebody read the whole thing on Shabbos. He started crying on Shabbos. But the, le- the end of the letter, he writes, he says, Thank you, Rebbe, for being mezakimi in oil ma'ba. But just as important, thank you, Rebbe, for being mezakimi in oil ma'zet. That through the shear, he has a better oil ma'zet. So what's the Rebbe that brings you to oil ma'ba? One halacha. So the Gemara, no, 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 you could explain my chachma, roy chachma. It's not one Allah, it's most of your chachma. Torah abadon is can be mikro, midah beinah midah. Those who learn chumash, it's a nice thing, but not such a nice thing. Not so, not so great. All you do the whole day is learn chumash. So, I need to tell the oilam, I'm, t- I'm really telling myself, as a yeshiva bacher, ex-yeshiva bacher, we didn't learn that much chumash. We didn't learn nabi at all. So Victor Miller always said that you should learn even 20 minutes a week, 30 minutes a week. You have no idea how much you can accomplish. If you, another week goes by, another, another 30 minutes, instead of just giving up and saying, listen, I don't know Komish, I don't know Navi, forget it. I'm just going to concentrate. It's Kedai to add a Seder like that. Says the Gemara, but Mishnah, what if you learn Mishnahis? Now I have to tell you, I have to, you know, wherever I go, whoever I bump into, I'm a missionary. I say, listen, what about that for you? I mean, you're going to learn some... So you know how many people tell me, I hear this all the time. He says, I don't do the daf. He says, what do you, you learn Torah every day? Yeah, I learn chassidus. I heard it hundreds, hundreds of times. Or some, some people say, I learn shnayis. What's the MS? What should you learn? What should you learn? Is chassidus, if, if you're only going to learn one thing, chassidus, maybe, maybe chumash, maybe shnayis, maybe gemara. What? Well, the problem is if you learn chassidus, you're not going to get to this gemara, so you won't know. Here it is. It says like this. The Mishnah, if a person just learns the Mishnahis, Mida, it's great. You'll even get an award for it. 
But Talmud, learning Gemara, Talmud, again, what's Talmud? Rashi explains it's Gemara, what we call today Gemara. That is the greatest, that's the highest level. And that's why Rabbi Yisrael, we learned that today. That's the reason. The Gemara says, the way, what you need to learn, if you're only going to learn one thing, I'm not saying, don't learn Hasidus. I'm saying if it's between Hasidus and Gemara, there's nothing greater, and the Taisis and the Rishonim always explain, the Gemara contains it all. The Gemara contains Nach, the Gemara contains Musr, Kabbalah, Halacha, Hadracha, everything. It's all in here. And now the Gemara contradicts itself. Second ago it said, you should learn Gemara, not Mishnah. Now all of a sudden it's saying Mishnah, not Gemara. It's this is contradiction. Which one is it? This was said in the time of Rebbe. Shafku Kula Alma Masnisin Vaazlu Bashta Talmuda, the whole world forgot about the Mishnah and they went into the Gemara. Rabbi Zai, allow me to read this long Rashi for you. I'll do it really quick. But it's it's a Gishmaka Rashi. Rashi explains the, the history of what happened and why things happened a certain way. Very Sidzika Rashi, I think. It's Kadai to know this. Top Rashi. Bimei Rebbe Nishiz Mishnazu. Three generations before Rabbeinu HaKadosh, Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, Rebbe, the author of the Mishnah, three generations before that, there was a major tumult in Klai Yisrael between all the hundreds of Talmidim of Shammai and Hill. Rabbi Machloik is B'Toyro, V'Nas is K'Shtei Toyros. It's literally like there was two different Toyros that we had. Bishamai said this, and Bishal said that was a disaster. How did it happen, says Rashi? Because of the Goyim that put us in such Golos. We couldn't get to the bottom of things. There was such a Balagan in Klai Yisrael that there was so many Machloikis in, we don't know what to do with them. So Rebbe, three generations later, he came along and he fixed it. Explains Rashi, how did he fix it? Why? The king of Rome, Antoninus, loved the Rebbe. They were best friends. There's a whole Gemara Nava Gazar, which Rashi even says that Yudon Beis, I think it's over there. The famous Gemara where Antoninus would visit Rebbe every single day. He had a tunnel. He'd go where nobody looked. He'd go underneath and he'd take two slaves with him. And when he went into Rebbe's house, he'd kill one. And when he got back to his, his palace, he'd kill the other one, bury them both. And I don't know if he buried them, left them there. And every day would repeat. Nobody knew that he went to visit Rebbe, but they were best friends. Because they were best friends, Rebbe had the ability and the luxury to reinstitute Torah and figure out what, what's what and which machleik is. V'nochum <laughs> There's no Masechtas until then. Give a simon. I heard this halacha from so and so. And they made a seder to the Masechtas. There's a zik in the Here, Yavamas, he talks about. Okay, the bottom line is, Rebbe made a big seder. Now the Gemara says, because in the time of Rebbe, Mishnah Mishnah Zu, Shafka Kula Alma Masisim, I was the Vasa Talmuda. If you went to like a yeshiva, yeshiva, like I, I went to Pesay, and uh, I can tell you that I could relate to this. We used to learn so much Rebar Ber and so many Reb Chaims that you ask somebody what the Gemara says, he didn't even know. Nobody, like we, we were just learning Achronium and Raid and Raid, and suddenly he says, what was the sugya? I don't remember. I don't even know what Masechta means. All I know, I'm in the middle of a Baruch Ber. I worked there for two weeks. Basically, that's what is going on here. The Oilam forgot about the Mishnah. They were so excited about the Gemara, Gemara, Gemara. It says, Rebbe, stop! You gotta know where you're coming from. You gotta know the history. We're, we're over here. It's very nice to do raid. It's nice to do Gemara. You have to know about the Mishnah. 
Rechaim Brisker said about the Brisker Rav, he said, my son knows Gemara Rashi Balpeh, the whole Shas Balpeh. So somebody said, eh, no, what's the big deal? He said, what's the big deal? You cannot say a Svara until you know Kol Shas with Rashi. That's what he said. You have to know Balpeh before you say one Svara. Why? Because maybe Rashi says something, some, exactly your Svara somewhere else. Maybe you You have to know Gemara Rashi. That's what he said. This is the Brisker Rav. Don't say it in yeshivas because they'll throw you out of there. But you have to know Gemara Rash. Says Gemara. And later on he said, because they were all running to Gemara, so he said, no, do Mishnah first. My Darush, where do you get this Rashi from? Oh, so Rabbi said, I want to take a pause there. In your, your schos, in your I want to tell you why I'm here. No pressure, Bechlap. But I'm here for one reason. And I'll tell you in a second. MDY is doing a charity campaign. But the reason why I'm here, I will not leave this place until Sholem Rand takes a page. That's why I'm here. Rabbi Zayn, I need all your help. Anybody have that on status? What? That's right. There's a bedroom upstairs, he said. So, I know we're in a big rush. I'll talk to you in one and a half minutes. What is MDY? And why is MDY raising money? And it has nothing to do with you. It's just you can tell your friends. And get somebody else to sign a page. And as long as Sean Rand takes a page, we're all good. And if Sean Rand doesn't take a page, well, all you guys are going to take a page. So put the pressure on. MDY is more than a sheer. MDY, through Tyra, reaches approximately 25,000 people a day. 25,000 people a day. I just started giving the shir in Hebrew two months ago, and there's over 3,000 Hebrew-speaking watchers a day. We have 12 employees, and we have to add more. Now, especially with the Hebrew one, we have to get another editor, another a camera operator, da 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 We feel that 25,000 people is givaldic, and the amount every day I get emails, you know, I read emails before shir, Usually besides today and whatever on the strip. But I read emails and the overwhelming uh, theme of the emails is you changed my life. Through Torah you changed my life. For instance, guy wrote in the other day. I, during the, 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 the Purim Suda, I did Shnai Mikra. I would never believe two years ago I'll do Shnai Mikra in the middle of the Purim Suda. Yeah. Or how many people? I got four or five emails. This is the first time in my life that I learned on Purim. Guy came over to me yesterday. This is the first time in my life I learned the important small changes that are really huge changes. Changes that the entire family, the wife, the children, everybody notices. People are learning Torah in front of the children now by the table. I personally believe, and everybody that's in MDY believes, that we can reach another 25,000 people easily in the next year or two. But for that, we need a stick of money. I asked a guy that has a beautiful yeshiva in Chicago, just asked me yesterday, a 75 buffer, Newberger. I'll tell you his name, Newberger. Maybe I shouldn't say his name, so I didn't say his name. <laughs> Erase, cut. So I won't say the exact number. He has 75 buffer. His budget a year is over $2 million for a 75 buffer. It's normal. We are reaching 25,000 people a day and more, and our budget is one and a half million. And I really believe we could reach 50000 And we will. We, get, we gave out over $300,000 worth of Gemaras. And he asked me, why? Why do you have to give this? Because for $50, we change a person's life. He gets the free Gemara. He gets addicted to learning. And his whole life becomes different. So a boy say, if you can, if you have it within you to help, take a page. You don't have to give a dime. All you have to do is pressure other people to give a dime. <laughs> Done. Done. You took a page? You took a page? I don't believe it. I don't really. Okay, right there. I'm going right there. A word is a word. I will tell you this though. Seriously, I had four meetings so far. Four meetings though since I came to America. Each one gave me eighteen thousand dollars, and one gave me twenty-five. I'm not saying it's tremendous money, but it's beautiful, beautiful. And sometimes instead of taking a page, if you go to one gvir, because there's so many of them out there, they give a lot of tzedakah, and you explain to them what MDY is. It's not just another shear. It's a shear. I, I'll say, I'm not biased. I'll say this might be the largest cure of organization in the world right now. Because through Tyre, we people. The Maldivian, I'll tell you one story and then I go weiter. 
a chassid with a beard up to here, with pace up to here. Many of you have seen him at the Shabbaton. He came over to me, can I speak to you privately with my wife? I said, okay. Comes to the side. By the time I got to the corner, they were both crying, literally tears that streaming down his cheeks. He couldn't really talk. Took him a minute to compose himself. And he says, listen, for five years, I didn't dive in once, not even on Yom Kippur. And since I watched your shir, I haven't missed a minion in over a year. That's the cure of crime. It's a guy that looks like every other chassid in the world. You would never see in a sec. You can't tell. He had the same Bieber hit and the same Begich as everybody else. But inside something is missing. And through Torah, we're Mekhara, we're Mekhara. And, I, and I'm not putting people down. I am a Kurv through the Shir. So I'm, I'm thinking and hoping that other people. Here you have Rabbi Yossi Klein over there. who It's his fault, this whole charity thing. He... Er- Yossi, stand up for one second. I want to say, I want to embarrass you, Rabbi. Stand up. Yossi Klein, every Shabbos, and ask every one of his friends. He, he doesn't go to sleep for, uh, Shabbos afternoon. He used to schluff like, you know, like everybody else. Three hours straight. He does Chazara on all seven daf. That means he changed his life. His life is Torah. His life is Chazara. His life is about helping others. He did the charity campaign. He did the Shabbaton. He's a plumber from, for months. No, he took it upon himself to do it. What does he know about charity campaigns? What does he know about Shabbatons? Mm-hmm. No, life-changing. Mark Ashkenazi over there. You should Mark. You should to all that. Salah. Thank you for coming. And we go right there. boy side. Take a page. Go out of your comfort zone. And let's raise some money here. No team spell. What? <laughs> what, Psalm Ran? I, I'm not going back there. Okay. We're going to go back there. It, oh, he's, no, but Dafka not going to do it. Shalom, I saw you do... How many of these campaigns have you seen on his statuses? Plenty. And I saw that he makes fun of the campaigns. This one is a life changer, Shalom. Life changer. How much? I want to know. Don't tell me a dollar. Okay, whatever you do, as long as you did a page. Zog the Gemara like this. My Dorush, he doesn't read the Bariloi. My Dorush, Hagi Lami Pishma will basically Hagi Machatoi. So just tell me if we have enough time to start our mafkin or we're going to start by our mafkin. Okay, so we'll start, we'll start our mafkin tomorrow, nice and fresh. So let's get to the end of the parak, and you guys are free to go and open up your own pages now. Tell to your, your nation their 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 chet their pesha. Tamid chacham could sin. How? Even though it's a mistake, I'll consider it Rahman al Islam like they did it on purpose, deliberately. What is that? These are Amaratim. That's the opposite. What they did deliberately as an Avera, we're going to make it as if it was the Shagi. You got to be careful with Tyro, with Talmud, with Gemara. If you passed him, and I say this all the time in Shir, don't ever pass him based on what Elie Stefanski said in Shir. I'm not a rub, not far from it. I never passed him. All I do is I like to push people's buttons. So I'll tell you a halacha that's like way out there. But it doesn't mean that's the halacha. Ask the local rabbi. When you make a mistake and say, well, listen, I thought that that was the halacha and the Gemara said. No, 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 no. Because both can consider it as if you did a deliberate aver. The ones who are fearful of his word, these are the Chachamim. People that learn Chumash, they're the brothers of those who learn Gemara, because they, they're always asking the people, you, you don't know Halacha from, from a Chumash, so they always have to ask the Gemara people, what's the Halacha? Your people that you hate, Elu Bali Mishnah. The Bali Mishnah, those who only learn Mishnah, is they, they're, they're, they despise the people that learn Gemara. Menadechem, says Rashi, is a lotion of Nida. Your Meruchav, your distance. Elu Ameoretz. As you know, an Ameoretz hates the Tamil Chacham. Hates. Yeah, like Rabbi Kiva, when he was an Ameoretz, hated the Tamil Chacham. Shematoyim Aposak Sivro Amubotas Ikuyom. You say, oh, it's Talarin. That's it. They're never going to get uh, Mashiach. When Mashiach comes, we're not going to look at them. Tamaloimar, Vinire, Bismachas, Hamid, and Amoritz that hated Doilim and Tamil Chachamid. 
he's going to be happy in the time of Mashiach. Shematoimar Yisrael Yevoishu. Maybe he'll be embarrassed when Mashiach comes. Tamadoimar Beheim Yevoishu. They, they, not us Yidden. They will be embarrassed. Or if the Gechavim Yevoishu, Yisrael Yismachu, Reboisai, we should be able to see Mashiach Bekoroiv, Hadron Allah Chayla Matthias, Hadron Allah Chayla Matthias, Hadron Allah Chayla Matthias. Thank you so much for coming out. Have a wonderful day.